One of the things that Lita and I love about this job is getting a chance to talk and interview and meet people. It goes without saying, that's what this job's all about. But it's made even more special when we get a chance to interview people whose careers we've been following and enjoying for decades. And that is the case with our next guest. She's an actor, producer, singer, artist, philanthropist. I didn't know this for a very long time, but she's also a breeder of purebred Arabian horses. She is also a recent ambassador with Renault sunglasses. Boy, this is a big thrill for me. It's a great pleasure to welcome from the southwest of England, Miss Susan George to our city tonight. Susan, welcome. Thank you, thank you. It's indeed a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you, Susan. It's great to have you. You know, you could your career could take up the entire half hour of our show, no problem. I'm gonna to try to zip through a bunch of things because I've been a fan, as I said, for a long time. Uh, one of the things I, I didn't know about you for a long time was that you really had become a seasoned veteran um, as a young child, as a teenager, can you talk a bit about the the difficulty of, of the transition from, say, teen, young adult, to, 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 to being an actor in your 20s and 30s? Because, you know, there's not a lot of people that can claim to have made that successful transition. You were a seasoned pro, as I said, as a teenager, and then seemed to move really well into adulthood as an actor. Talk to a bit about that. Well, I did start as a, a tiny, tiny child, you know. Um, my parents owned a hotel when I was little, and um, my, my mother always wanted to be in this business, and she was, in a way, for a long while in her younger life, and it didn't work out for whatever reason. And I think because I was a reasonably pretty child, she just decided to... She would put me up for things, and um, I was quite a big personality when I was little, and... Um, it just it happened that I started very very young I mean I'm talking about very young like five years old and um, it evolved you know I stayed in this career I loved what I was doing um, and it as I say it evolved the years that I did I think it was 12 television plays before I was actually 12 years of age then at 12 I went into the London production the West End production of The Sound of Music as Brigitte and then Louisa as I got bigger. And so I have been in this business all my life. I, I knew no other and I didn't want to know any other at that time. I've always been impressed with you and what you've chosen. Uh, although it's quite commonplace today to kind of jump from TV to film and back and forth, uh, back, you know, 40, 50 years ago, you really seem to excel in that. I'm thinking, you know, within a span of like a year or two, you're doing great shows like The Persuaders with Tony Curtis and Roger Moore. Look that one up, folks. And then a movie that really seemed to take you to the next level, which was Straw Dogs uh, with Dustin Hoffman, directed by Sam Peckinpah. Did that take you to the next level in terms of acting choices after doing that film? Straw Dogs started as an international movie. It had Dustin Hoffman, I, was, I played opposite Dustin and Sam Peckinpah, as you say, was the director, and it was an international movie. So it did take me to the realms of international, I suppose, career, stardom, whatever you want to call it. It really did change things in a dramatic way. And that made me, once I was international, then I made a lot of movies actually out in California and all across America. Um, I've made a lot of movies in my life, and I'm very happy to say that. I'm very proud. Um, no interview would be complete uh, without talking about uh, your late partner, a, a very talented actor in his own right, a raconteur, I always used to say about him. Uh, tell us about uh, your, your wonderful partner who passed away way too soon, Simon McCorkendale. You took some positive positivity out of that and, and created something wonderful called The Lasting Life of Simon McCorkendale Legacy. Tell our viewers uh, a bit about uh, that fine foundation charity. Well... Simon was my one in a million husband, without doubt, and I miss him every day, every second of every day of my life. For me, I just knew that what he would want me to do is to give back in some way to others and make this incredible life of his that was so powerful and enigmatic, turn it into something really special and to be able to help others within our sadness and it was incredibly, incredibly sad and still is, but to be able to make something special out of it. And so I decided to set up this charity um, two years after I lost Simon. It's called Lasting Life, the Simon McCorkendale Legacy. And that charity I fundraise to give to smaller, smaller, um, really struggling situations with the cruel disease of cancer. 
that's what the charity is all about. And then this year, I had, I thought, how am I going to, in, within the lockdown situation and this awful situation that's happened across the world and hurt so many people, I thought, how can I, how am I going to fundraise in this, in these times? How am I going to ask people to to give money? It's a really everybody's needy. Everybody needs money, and I thought it was going to be really, really difficult. So I decided to do something quite out of the box and that was usual for me something out of the box and something new <laughs> i decided another job another hat i decided to open a shop um, called my things and others my things and others.com and um, that shop all of my i've got some wonderful wonderful special talented celebrity friends actors writers producers directors and they are all giving me gifts things that they, special things to them, clothes, artifacts, paintings, whatever they have to give to me to put in the shop and to sell in the name of this charity and to, to raise funds. And it's such an exciting thing. It seems to have caught the imagination of so many people and we're doing wonderfully with it. And everything that, that you, you see the important thing, Jim, is when you own something, when you've been a fan of someone for years and years and years, and then you're actually able, you're actually able to own something that belonged to them, that's a very special thing. And I think that's what's touched everybody. And certainly in Simon's case, I've had people write to me. And recently, um, a guy wrote to me and just said, I'm wearing a gold Balmain bow tie. And the wonderful thing about this bow tie is it once belonged to Simon McCorpindale. And if that can happen in this world, if we can give and give back and make someone happy by that really simple, very beautiful thing, then that's what this charity is all about. Uh, well said, Susan. Um, it has been a great pleasure to, to talk to you. You talk about meeting people whose work you admire and they turn out to be as nice as you'd hope they'd be, and you are certainly that. Uh, thank you for sharing time with us. Uh, continued success. We should also say everything that Susan and I have talked about, she's got a hell of a website, susangeorge.co.uk. Everything we talked about, you'll find on her website. Susan, thanks for joining us on an evening where you are, and we wish you all the best going forward. Bless your heart, Jim. Thank you so much. <laughs>